Hello friends, this video on squares and square roots part 9 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So now based on whatever we have learned about perfect square, like mostly the properties of perfect squares, how do we distinguish which is a perfect square and which is not, let us have a quick summary. So this summary will actually help you to distinguish or identify which number is a perfect square and which number is not. So first thing is, if the number ends in 0, 1, 4, 5, 6 or 9, then it must be a perfect square. So this is one very easy way of determining whether a number is a perfect square or not. So first look at these digits. Next is, perfect squares can only have even number of zeros at the end. So if you have numbers ending with zeros, for example, if you had something like 3000, so is this a perfect square? No, because the number has three zeros or the number of zeros, so it is not a perfect square. But if you have something like 2500, so is this a perfect square? Yes, because it has even number of zeros, so this is a perfect square. If a number is a perfect square, it has to be the sum of successive odd numbers starting from 1. So any number, any damn number which is a perfect square, it has to be the sum of first n odd numbers. That is why we say that the sum of first n odd numbers is n square. So that n square is a perfect square. So for example, if we talk up, if we take the same number 2500, now you might ask that 2500 is such a big number. So how do we know that if it is actually, you know, sum of first n odd numbers or not? So this 2500 is your n square. So if you find the value of n, so in this case 2500 is the square of 50. So that actually means that 2500 is the sum of first 50 odd numbers. So in this fashion, like here you have written 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So in this way you have to write 50 first odd numbers. So 2500 is the sum of 50 first odd numbers. In fact, any number which is a perfect square, it must be expressed as sum of successive odd numbers starting from 1. If a number is a square of odd number, then it should be expressed as a sum of consecutive natural numbers. Like as I said, that square of odd numbers, like 9 is a square of odd number because 9 is 3 square. So 9 should be written as sum of 2 consecutive natural numbers, like sum of 4 and 5. Similarly, if you talk about, uh, let's say, 121. 121 is the square of odd number 11. So if this is written as 60 plus 61, so which are again consecutive natural numbers. So basically these are some of the basic properties of perfect squares looking at which by you can very easily identify whether a given number is a perfect square or not. Thank you. Please visit examfear.com for free quality education. You can learn with a simple four-step learning process wherein you can watch video lessons, you can ask your questions, you can refer notes and you can take a free online test. We have content for class 6 to 12 on physics, chemistry, mathematics and biology along with practical videos. So please subscribe to our channel for daily updates. Thank you.